Hey you, wherever you are in the world right now, thank you so much for being here with me. We know that we're living in a crazy time and the world is changing. So let's create a bridge as we travel through one another's countries, removing all the labels, coming together as one people, as we find our home in one world. And as we do this, this is why our signature talk is so important today. Today, I am really excited to welcome my guest speaker, Jesse Ann Nichols George from Maine, the great state of Maine here in, in the United States. And Jesse is actually the author of The Code Journey. She has an incredible story. And I am really super excited to have this interview with Jesse uh, Ann, uh, who actually goes by Ann, and she'll explain that. Um, because there's so much that she has that can offer to each and every single one of you in my audience. So welcome on. How are you today? I am doing great, Kathy. And it's so great to be on your show. I mean, this is just really exciting and it's wonderful to be a part of your journey and a part of the growth that's going on for you as well. Thank you. And, you know, one of the things that has been really intriguing is that the state of the world is just really evolving and changing at such a rapid pace. And I, I think that one of the things that people are really having a hard time with is the accelerated rate of how things are changing and trying to really understand what is evolving, like what is happening, and then how does it affect them? It seems to me that on a daily basis, there is a bombardment of information that's coming to us literally from every aspect, literally around the world. Like my brother this morning had texted me a text. And when I read it, I, my eyes weren't even open yet, you know, <laughs> and I look at my phone and I read the text and I'm like, I had to do like a triple take, like what, what, you know, because the text had nothing to do with anything, but it had everything to do with the state of the world and communicating something to me. And I just thought, this is where we are, you know, in our space right now. Like we, we are literally consumed with what is happening because we're in a state of confusion, it seems like. Would you agree? I would. And the acceleration is really an interesting piece because with that, what's happening is we're experiencing in a week what we used to experience in several months or a year. And there is a lot happening. And this is this is part of a natural flow, really, for when we're going through major growth periods or major transformation periods, or we're hitting a point that is a, a critical point in existence. And when you hit a critical point in an existence, then everything kind of magnifies, everything kind of um, greatly increases on the planet that that's happening or the area that the existence that that's happening in. And so that's exactly where we are. We're at another point that is just as critical as the ending of Lemuria or the ending of Atlantis. And so what we're seeing is people are asking for the truth to come out in things. They're asking for clarity. They're asking for understanding in things. What they're not always prepared for is how that's going to come out. They're not always prepared for some of the visible battles to be shown in that process or that they might have to experience some hard challenges before they get to that stronger space before they get to that space that has that openness to it. And it's kind of like when you are um, going through your own personal transitions a lot of times and you're resisting some of the knowledge or you want it to be a certain way, you want it to happen in this really pleasant, beautiful way. <laughs> But there's not time for it to necessarily unfold in the pleasant, beautiful way because of the critical point that it's at. And so this acceleration is happening. And with each opening, with each piece of truth that comes out, with each step that we take to move into 
a more soulful way of living on the planet, then also you're going to have some rebellion from the natural polarity to that. And that's where I think people, um, they, they feel a little challenged <laughs> in the time, shall we say. And I think also because for so long, even those people who are in the spiritual community, I see it a lot, where they're looking at things from a 3D perspective. They, it's just kind of like what back in 2012, they wanted to wake up after the winter solstice and they wanted it all to be a rosy, happy place. But the soul, you know, only the human self sees the other aspects of just, of things being just this pleasant, no challenge space. The soul is a little bit different. It doesn't look at it in terms of good or bad. It's more of this is what's necessary. The soul is looking through a lot of these processes saying, yeah, it might be a little hard on the human self, but <laughs> this is exactly what needs to happen. So the irony is even in all of this turmoil that is happening in our world and has been going on in our world, that we actually are rejoicing and celebrating inside because we can see the progression even among what feels like blocks to the human self. We can see that the unfolding is happening, even if it isn't in the most pleasant way that our human self would like it to happen. Yeah, and, and the thing that's really interesting about this period of time is that we literally in a in a you know series of months over a year plus have had our entire life change and that's true of everybody on the planet there's not one single person on the planet who hasn't been affected by this and you know it, it's in a variety of contexts as far as loss of life loss of jobs loss of you know lifestyle there's been a lot of loss for everybody. And I recently was having a conversation with someone and I think, you know, part of the interesting thing that like flew out of my mouth without me even recognizing it until after the fact was that I literally said, we're living in a space of darkness and it's really important for the people you know, of the planet to really recognize that and raise their vibration and go into the light. Like you really have to be very cognizant of raising your vibration, whatever that means for you. So if that means, you know, going out and grounding with mother earth and using mother earth to heal you or doing your meditations and meditation can be whatever it is that gets you in your Zen state. It could be playing music, it could be coloring, you know, it could be art, it could be a, all kinds of things. And especially for children, you know, it's really important that the children are taken care of too, that they're being pulled out of the darkness because as we're doing our interview today, we know that around the globe, uh, suicide rates are up to about 30% and the greatest population is young girls right? Which is very, very, you know, unsettling for any parent to hear, but it's really necessary that people are aware of these statistics and also aware to look for signs and things like that. But when I was having this conversation about living in the darkness, like this dark period of time, what really was abundantly clear to me and people that know my story know that I literally live from the inward space outward. You know, I know we're traveling in these human body forms, but literally it's your soul's journey. It's your soul that's experiencing the day in, day out, when you put your head on your pillow at night. It's your soul that you are at rest with. And it's so, so important that our soul journey, we are taking the time to pay attention to what the soul actually needs and making sure that this soul space is in a space that we're recognizing what our need is. We're recognizing how to get ourselves out of the darkness, the slump, the rut, whatever you want to title it, because the only way we can do that is by recognizing that we're uncomfortable 
And it's really important that we're not living in a space of denial because that's one thing that I see over and over and over people coming to me and they're in a space of denial. Like they don't recognize this denial space. Are you finding this to be true of people you're talking to? Yes, I, I do find that there are a lot of people sitting in the dis, den, denial and that's I would say many reasons behind that, many aspects behind that. But this dark period is not really so much of a dark period. It might feel that way in some aspects, but I'm finding that it is really, it, it's, about, it's about getting us to re-look at things. And for so long, I think societies have become very, very complacent. They've become very comfortable. They've had a lot of basic needs met. They could go through their day. They didn't worry about it. They didn't think much about what they were doing. If they wanted a job, they could go get a job, things like that. Well, these times are really getting people to relook at what their true priorities are. What are the really important things in life? It's showing them where they've been living beyond their means. It's showing them where they've been doing things for the sake of money and not for the sake of their being their passion or being something that really allows them to thrive. It's, it's throwing a lot at people right now and they're getting a lot to deal with and that can be very overwhelming. So at some points that makes it easier to deny something than to embrace it. Um, you know, in denial, usually the people that are struggling with that have some sort of aspect of guilt going on for them. They have some aspect of unworthiness going on for them, feeling that they are not good enough, that they should have been able to see what was coming. But when we look at all the programming that has been layered in for decades and decades and decades of what's going on, when we look at the way that we were raised, I mean, I look at the way my human self was raised and it's not, you know, it's not that I had bad or evil parents or anything like that. They just wanted me to have a more comfortable life than they did when they were really young type of thing. And this happens when we get to certain points in society, but in that process, we were not given as a culture, as a society, for many of us that are living right now, the true tools and the true understanding of things because people were too busy protecting us, too busy trying to re-implement implement these really subtle layers of things to regain control. Um, so this denial that comes up in people is really a space of overwhelm when you think about it. It's really the space of, I can't deal with the truth right now. There's too much coming at me. It's too disorientating. And you know, in a lot of ways it is because in these times it's really hard sometimes to sit down and tell what is truth and what isn't and what has to have an illusion attached to it for one reason or another. And this is just, it's, it's like putting somebody in tremendous shock. So denial is kind of like the flight response. If you look at fight or flight, because we do see some people out there are fighting, <laughs> right? They're, they're embracing true. it and then they're going into fight mode. And then you've got the people who are denying things that are happening. And that's the flight instead of the fight. And so I think with this denial aspect, it's hard because we don't have the time right now. When I look at the codes and the period we're in and the work that I do, we really don't have the time to do the gentle awakening and wake people up as gently as they were put in to the sleep. So a lot of people are coming back and they're saying, gosh, I've, you know, I've let go of family. I've let go of friends for the sake of money. It's, it's just, you know, the, 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 the self-abuse that they're putting on them right now is enormous. So they're just adding to the burdens and adding to the burdens. And I think when we get into these spaces, the, the key thing is to not avoid things, 
to not look in denial, but to say, you know, where is there truth in this? Because there's truth in everything, even even the most incredible ploys in the world and agendas, there's truth in them somewhere. Because if there was no ounce of truth, nobody would support them whatsoever. Yeah. So there has to be some factor of truth in there somewhere, even if it's a small piece. But this overwhelm, I tell people, you know, sometimes you have to just step back and disconnect because there's there's so much influence in the mind. You have to step back, disconnect from the news, disconnect from the the internet or things like that for a while and just be with you just be with your own self and and come back in and say no nope, it wasn't wrong you know there's all these things that played on into things it it doesn't matter if you know we got complacent but the thing is is now we're in a time that we need to act on things now we're in a time that complacency doesn't work and this right. is one of the cool things when you start to look at things from a soul space. It's not that complacency is always wrong. There's a time, there's a place, there's a place that we can be more relaxed. But then there's times and places that we need to be more in action. So I think that's where it is. And I think some people are not maybe not ready to take action and they're being forced into that action. So it's easier to drop into denial and try to avoid it. Yeah, and if that's what has always happened in the past for them, you know, it, it's this cycle, right? This pattern of behavior, this cycle that they're used to. And it is hard to change. For a lot of people, change is very uncomfortable. And, you know, when I look at change, I always say change is a blessing because it's an opportunity for growth. So if you can, if you can remove that, negative connotation to change and look at it as a blessing because it's an opportunity for growth, then it changes the dynamics of everything. And it doesn't make it so, you know, feeling so, I don't know, harsh. It makes it actually more inviting and more exciting because you're actually allowing something new to come in where something old is falling off and you can release that. So I think, you know, there is a lot of good that comes from change, not always, but I mean, for the most part, it, it really is something that we manifest. One of the things that I really find intriguing about your work, and I think we should talk about that because we've been talking a little while, we haven't really talked about any of that yet. So <laughs> we'll, we'll dive into that. Um, but if you could, um, how about if we just start here? If you could just help the audience understand a little bit about you and what it is that you do. Absolutely. I'd, I'd love that. And we'll kind of keep this a small cap. And if anybody wants the full story on this, um, on my YouTube page, I have interviews. And um, there was a three-part interview done in May of 2020 that uh, was done by David Clark. Calgary and he we laid everything out in there in detail so <laughs> you can go and knock yourself out on those to get the full story of things but I am a walk-in and I stepped in for another soul who was in my body and I know that that is probably going to sound a little crazy to some people, maybe even a little far out there for what they want to embrace, but it's been very interesting in this process of how many people go, oh, wow, I can't believe you're really sharing this with us. I have somebody I can relate to now, but the soul that I stepped in for was actually part of my Magi team. So I work as part of the Magi team, which is a wisdom team that works with every existence, every starseed grouping, every universal grouping out there, um, collective times and spaces. So we're, we're in all of it. <laughs> We've seen these things over and over again. So this is nothing new for me, what we're experiencing in our world, in a sense. Um, the soul that I stepped in for was under some danger, and we needed her energy back out of this existence right now where it could flourish greater love in the universe. It has to do with the love story. Um, basically back in 2014, she rescued a cat 
before she was getting ready to um, leave a home and live out of her vehicle and travel the US. So in the process of doing that, she did rescue this cat from going over a waterfall, which is you know, really her sole union um, that incarnated in for this very short period of time. Eventually that cat passed away on the road. And uh, when I say on the road from in the traveling and the journeys and uh, through that period of reflection and grief, which we all go through when we uh, have an enormous loss in our human existence uh, or what feels like loss to us, then she started remembering the Magi language, which I refer to and she referred to as the codes. And it was about understanding that through this cat, her soul self, um, the other part of it had brought back the memory of our language to her, where she could come into this understanding, she could piece things together. And she had already done a lot of work. She was already blending a lot of different modalities and things. And this work that we do with the codes blends over 50 different modalities to it. So it's pretty enormous layered work, none of those things used in the traditional ways. And through that process, she really came into memory of who she was that really hit into the human brain and uh, awakened a lot of things for her and brought her on track. And as she worked with them and she got her language back, her native language back, shall we say, then uh, she wanted to find a way that she could help other people, that she could bring it out. And so many of the ways was just massive and <laughs> not reasonable for being able to put out there with ethics and integrity. Mm -hmm. So what she decided to do was to create a, a yearbook that she would produce one every year and it would have the insights from uh, the year, the months, the days, all kinds of things in it. And that way people could explore it as their own journey, kind of the way you'd use a reference book. And it would give them the ability to be in the flow of life, to be in divine flow while going through a human existence. And that's why she refers to it as a daily guide for life on earth. Well, when I stepped in a little over two years ago, um, by the time this show air airs, it'll be at least two and a half years, maybe a little bit longer, um, I took over that work. And that's what I came in because we couldn't just have anybody step into this body and take over this work. And I spent about two months sharing body with her so that I could really come in. And even though I had been part of the team when we were watching over her the whole time she was living here, um, I, I needed some better insight from working with her, seeing it through the human self and connecting with who was who in her life and things like that to make everything as seamless as possible in that transition. So this, for example, is now the book that I just put out for 2021. So every year it's a little bit different but similar. This is about a 675 page book. So if you think you're going to get a little pamphlet with one sentence for every day, you're wrong. <laughs> you're going to get a lot more than that in this book. And what's so cool is it just it goes with you. It it grows with you. It's you're never going to outgrow this work. And no matter what your background or your experience is, uh, even if you're not that much into spirituality or something that's got a lot of just great principles that help you to make sense out of life. And so here I am after this period of time, <laughs> busy doing this work and busy sharing through the Code Insights, which is really a language for me. I take it and I take things like letters and numbers and uh, things like that, similar to maybe what a, a numerologist or somebody would do. And I translate that into my own language because everything tells me a story. Every letter, every number tells me a story. And I 
bring that into my own language to understand how everything's interacting. And then I bring it back out into the human language where everybody can access it. And I think a book is just a beautiful way to do it because it's, it's easy to access. It's right there for people and they can just go right into it. And, and there's always these incredible layers. So no matter, like I said, no matter how much wisdom you gain along the way, how many years you've been on your path, I have people that have been on their path for decades that work with this book and they sit back and they go, it never ceases to amaze me. It's right on target. <laughs> it's right there. It tells me the, it's like getting the background story to the story of something. You, you, you really get to understand what's behind it. It's not just like, hey, people are angry today. It's like, today people are angry because of insecurities. Another day they're angry because of being in victim spaces or they're not uh, getting the recognition or there's something else, you know. So there's, it brings out the awareness and through the awareness is where we can find oftentimes the strength, the ability to handle what is happening in our world. Because I truly believe that when you have the truth and you understand what's happening, you can deal with pretty much anything out there. You know, and I'm just gonna put this out there. So I have a copy of your book and it's The Code Journey which is you have it, the code journey for each year. So for, for this year, the code journey for the year 2021, for people that are listening and, you know, can't actually see a picture of it. Um, so it's the code journey for the year 2021, a daily guide for life on earth. And it's authored by Jesse on Nichols George. And the interesting thing about this, because I do have a copy in my hands, and you haven't said this, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put this out into the world because you're very humble and I know how that is to be because <laughs> I am that way as well. But the thing about this book is when I first, when I first heard about your book, I thought, okay, this is going to be more of a devotional kind of feel. But this really isn't a devotional kind of feel. But that is not to say that it doesn't incorporate bringing in the higher power. Because throughout this entire language of the book, you can feel the higher power operating through it by the words, by the messages, by, you know, the language, the way the gentleness is of how it is being communicated. There's so much to this. And for, for everyone listening, um, one of the things that is so beautifully done with this book is that there is this guidance from your, you know, your angelic influences. There is this segment that will section out each of the, the weeks of the month, you know, through the year that will tell you, okay, this is, this is where we are with the angelic influences. This is where we are with the moon phase, you know, if it's a full moon or um, a new moon, wherever we are with that. If you're in a, in, in a certain hemisphere, this is what you may be experiencing. You know, if you're in the Southern hemisphere versus the Northern hemisphere, there's so much information packed in this. And it's, what's interesting about it is that, I mean, I'm just looking, you know, I'm just looking through here real fast and I see maybe, I don't know, they're not long paragraphs. There, there's maybe like four or five sentences, but there's about, you know, six to 10, you know, paragraphs with four or five sentences. So it's a quick, easy read. It's not something that's going to take you a really long time on a daily basis to, you know, sit and just kind of get this guidance. It's not a horoscope. It, it's literally a gentle approach to living life with the awareness that, Maybe today the energy is, is that you have to have more forgiveness in your soul for yourself, or maybe you need to be more cognizant of how you're engaging the outside world. You know, there's a lot of, um, a lot of different things that are happening each and every day. So I love the way that this operates. I love, I love it as a companion piece to my Bible, right? Because 
it does offer this really beautiful insight that you wouldn't necessarily get otherwise. And I just, I think it's, it's very beautifully done. So if you're in the audience and you're listening, and this is something that you would like to, you know, get your hands on, how can the audience acquire your Code Journey book? You know, the easiest way is to go to my website, which is CompassionCodes.com. And there is a tab there called Goods. And under the Goods tab, it'll say the code journey. And if you go on there, you'll have the most, you'll have the links that will get you directly to the pages to purchase the book you want. And I'll also note that for people who want to kind of explore what the content is like a little bit before making a purchase on the book, I make the previous ebook versions available for free through Smashwords. So you can go in and download those for free through Smashwords. Um, the current year will continue to hold its price on it. I do tend to, to reduce it a little bit as the year goes on on the ebook. I can't really do that with the paperback, but um, it's, it is very interesting because it is a great companion to so many things. I myself use this book because I write it in advance, as you know, I'm, you know, by the time this airs, I will be well into writing the 2022 book, <laughs> and uh, it's always interesting. I, I use this every day, and I think I spend maybe 15 minutes on an average day. There are some days I spend longer. I might spend a half hour on it uh, because maybe we're starting a month. So we have a lot of things that are coming in at one time. We have the month influences and maybe new angel influences and a day influence all going on. So it takes a little bit longer at the very beginning of the month, for example, on things. But there's so many interesting pieces in here to help unfold answers. And in doing this work, it's really unfolding or unprogramming our mind in a lot of ways. It's, it's doing this aspect of reopening our minds to be in harmony with our soul's energy, in harmony with God's energy. So I think that's why it's so easy to see where those connections are. And there's no right or wrong in using this book. I have some people that like to read the day uh, the day's energy the night before, and then let it sit through their dreams and work through things in their dream spaces. I have a lot of people, they like to get their cup of coffee or tea or whatever in the morning and sit down and read it before they do anything else and start their day. It's a great way to move forward with insight, with foresight, I should say, because if you know that people are going to be in a very challenged space, or you know that misunderstandings are likely, or you know that people aren't paying an, a, a, much attention that day, then you can adjust for that and not get caught in reactive spaces. And then also in the book, there's a lot of invitation steps. So you kind of have this flexibility depending on how much you want to be active in everything that particular day or at that particular time. You know, if you, if you don't want to take the action steps, you can't. But the action steps are more of an invitation to explore more and to open to, to considering different possibilities or different thoughts or different opportunities. And I find that this is so important. I'm seeing these amazing growths in people's lives, whether it's businesses taking off or just breaking through uh, patterns that they've lived with most of their life or things like this. And, and I have people that says, you know, we're sitting down, we're racking our head. I'm sitting here on the stairs with my spouse. And we say, well, let's go look at what the J code journey says. <laughs> and they'll open the book up. And, yep, there's the explanation right there. And it just seems to fit in with whatever's happening because it simultaneously describes what's going on personally, as well as what's going on in the world. And so it just does it and it gets our mind to ask questions, to not just accept things, but to ask questions, to explore different thoughts, to explore these different possibilities. So there's really no right or wrong in this process. It's not like you're doing this right or you're doing that wrong. 
it's just an invitation to explore different things. And when you talk about change, that's some of the things that the book will bring up. It will bring up the people that are in certain spaces or mindsets or taking certain actions. We know they're operating in distortions today. On the contrary to that, what does this have to offer you? What if this is a possibility? What if this isn't about destroying your life or wrecking everything that you thought you've worked for? What if this is giving you the opportunity to step into dreams that you never would have pursued without this happening? What if this is an opportunity to make a change that you've been resisting, to do something for yourself that you've been putting off? And this is what happens oftentimes when we get into that critical change period. It's oftentimes because it's now at a point that we, we want to embrace it. The only question is we have the choice of whether that's going to be traumatic, dramatic, incredible, offer us blessings. We still have the choice. And I think that's a big piece that the code journey reminds us of. And it reminds us of a lot of great little points of, is this really an integrity? Is this really in truth? And these are guideposts to know whether something is in God's alignment or divine alignment um, or working in spiritual purity or in a clear space that's going to benefit us. Because if it's full of all this drama and lies and manipulation and turmoil going on, then, you know, that's, that's a situation that's not working in God's energy. Right. And, you know, so many times we've just ignored that. I talked about complacency at the beginning and we get become complacent going, oh, it's not that big of a deal. Oh, it's just this little piece. Well, no, it usually isn't that little piece. Mm -hmm. And it, it, the code journey would get us to stop and ask things like, is this really what you want to feed your energy into? Mm -hmm. And and it's amazing. I, I love where people... Um, come back to this and just just yesterday the day before we're doing this recording a friend of mine who's dealing with some very intense things and it's okay for me to say what I'm going to say because it's something she put out publicly um, she just recently found out her daughter was killed in a fire and her daughter had been missing for a while and she would go into the book and it would help her to find this comfort. And she says, I, I can't tell you what this has done for me because she says in my past, I would have gone into old nasty patterns, my addictive patterns or gone into these dark, dark spirals that I don't know if I'd come out of. And I have situations like that. I have people that come to me and say, you know what? If this situation came into my life two years ago or three years ago before I started working with your book, I would be in another total crash in my life, another total breakdown, immobilized from literally doing anything. But after working with this book for the last two or three years, I'm standing up for myself. I'm finding a strength in myself to ask people questions and not just let people bulldoze over me or be a bully to me or take advantage of me anymore. And so this, this amazing, beautiful strength that I see and, and these stories that I hear from people are just, are just incredible. And I could probably go on and on like that, <laughs> but I don't want to, I don't want to brag. I'm just trying to give some people some examples um, I think one of the most recent, well, they're, both of those are pretty recent. And then one more of the recent one that I got from somebody was um, it literally saved her like tens of thousands of dollars in a court case wow. by following some personal work that I had done for her. And um, she says, you know what, if I hadn't known what was in the information you gave me, then... I probably would have reacted and I would have gone down a path that would have cost me a lot of money that I didn't end up having to pay. And we're talking, like I said, tens of thousands of dollars for her. So it's just 
to me, the beautiful part is seeing this growth. It just makes me smile when somebody comes to me and said, I stood up for myself today, or, you know, they share these amazing experiences. And, and I just love how one set of information can apply to people all over the world, everywhere, because that's the way the codes work. It's about this interaction that's happening. It's a beautiful, beautiful experience in the sense that it's kind of like having a friend that <laughs> is just, you know, alongside of you. And it's a very gentle approach. Like, you know, it, it will talk about whatever it is in the gentlest way, always allowing you to use your free will and understand that you know, if you go one direction or the other direction, it's up to you, but just have this awareness, you know, have this awareness of, you know, gentleness and grace. And, and I think that's the thing that was um, most profound for me when I was reading, you know, through what I've already read to this point is that there's this, this gentleness and this grace that is communicated throughout this. And it, it really is like having a friend, you know, with you. And um, I know that probably sounds weird because you're an author and, you know, I'm like saying that, but, but it's interesting because I think that that is what makes it so special, you know, is just having that kind of experience with this, you know, book and this journey. And I wonder too, um, you know, you, you talk about these experiences that, you know, different people have come to you and said, well, this is how it's helped me, or this is how it's, it's helped me get through a difficult time or whatever. But I mean, what about the flip side? Do you have people coming to you saying, this has really changed me in the sense that it's brought abundance to me because I looked at life through a different lens? Absolutely. I think that that is that's probably a huge comment uh, that I get from people a lot of times is that it's changed the way that they look at life. It's changed the way that they perceive things. It gets them to be a little more open to consider multiple possibilities instead of just looking at things through one narrow perspective and realizing that there are these different layers to things that Maybe people aren't just mean for the sake of being mean. <laughs> there might be something underlying it. And again, you know, the interesting piece in that is that it helps us to understand something. Does that mean we have to put up with the meanness because we understand it? Well, no. And oftentimes in the book, I'll even say that, you know, you might need to walk away from somebody right now. Even if you love and care about them, you might still need to give some distance between them. And I think it, it does bring in that awareness that you can love somebody and not want to interact with them. You can have this love and this compassion for what's going through. And I think the understanding really unfolds that way of living in compassion with yourself, with other people. Uh, it comes into a lot of times the aspects of how we really need to be taking care of ourselves how we need to be placing ourselves as a priority, not in a greedy, selfish sort of way, but in a self-care aspect. And so, yes, absolutely. I mean, people do, do talk about that a lot, that it's changed their perceptions, their views, um, whether they react or they don't react to something. Uh, it's given them maybe some patience to sit back uh, even today, I know of a friend who's very, very busy. Normally, she runs a business, and she has a beautiful shop in Vermont. And and she had sent me something through it. I had responded back to her, just verifying to make sure, you know, what I saw was correct, and that's what she meant. And and she came back, and she said, and you're going to be so proud of me. She says, I'm going to take it easy today, and I'm going <laughs> to relax. And you know I don't do that, but the code said that, and I'm going to take advantage of it. And so she's giving herself this permission to do something that she needs to do because she understands that she can afford to do that when the codes say this is the energy and that it's not going to hurt her. It's not going to set her back. It's not going to create her more stress in doing that. 
And uh, so, yeah, it's very, very exciting uh, to see this. And when people travel now, I hear people that, you know, they'll travel around or they'll be going places or even if it's for the weekend and they'll, they'll send me something, they'll send me a book or <laughs> a little video clip and they're like, look, look, I got my book with me. I don't go anywhere without it. <laughs> <laughs> and I know, you know, one of those people like that. <laughs> I do actually. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I think I think it's really intriguing because we started this conversation in regards to the accelerated state that the world is living in right now. I mean, we're just we're we're running rampant, you know, like fire. Like it's just so fast and this book also allows that acceleration to slow down because you're you're able to hold back and see things through a different lens and see things and feel things even because it's it's a different space that you're coming from. It's not this outward space. This is and this is the beauty of the unfolding of 2020 is that people were forced to look at this outward space and really reevaluate re that. And for you know, for you to come into the world and have this beautiful book that can allow people to take this journey, but use it from the inward space. That's what I do with Retreat to Peace. It's all let's work on this inward stuff and let's work on the soul as far as you know, moving through life with the self-care, the grace, the compassion, all of these things. And that's you know, and that code journey that the soul is on that you express in your book is such a beautiful way to kind of pull everything back and say, okay, let's just take a breath. Let's reevaluate this. Let's look at it through a different lens, you know, on a day-to-day -day basis. And it's just really beautiful. So I, I love, I, I think the timing of it, I know you've been doing this for years, but I think the timing of it in the way of the world right now is so, so on point, like literally it's so on point. So I encourage the audience, if you're listening to this interview, um, consider taking a look because you might be surprised on how it could help you, you know, and that's not to say that it's replacing anything of, you know, you're using as your tool that is of your higher power. But I also think that when we're in these valleys, when we're, you know, deep in these valleys and we're really searching for guidance and searching for tools, um, this, you know, this is an opportunity to use some of these tools and you've provided one of those. So it, it's really a great thing. And I, I thank you. I really do. I thank you. Well, I appreciate all of that. And it's very interesting. Part of what feels so challenging in the acceleration is when we get caught up in the drama of it. And so the book kind of helps us to step back a little bit at times. Go, Let's just step back and observe what's happening here instead of being wrapped up in this drama because it really is. And so things can actually move very fast if we're not swept up in the drama of the situation. So the book kind of gets us to step out of that drama in a lot of ways. And I find that with this, you know, you can't always carry your big giant crystal singing bowls with you wherever you go, right? You can't always, you know, openly sit there and start saging your work environment, especially if you work like in a big box store or something like that. You know, these tools are something you can carry with you right up here. It's building this beautiful relationship between your human self and your soul self and getting them to work together, getting them to have this open dialogue and communication and to realize that you're a beautiful partnership together. And that is an inward tool that requires you to have nothing with you. Because that information sticks, you'll pull the concepts that you want, no matter how much you go through the different concepts, you're going to always be unfolding another layer or another piece of the insight or a new perspective that you didn't have on it before. And that you can carry with you anywhere, wherever you are into your day. So yeah, it really is. It's really 
it's an exciting piece and it works with whatever else you're doing. You know, it doesn't sit there and say, if you do this, you can't do that. It will work with probably anything that you're already working with in most yeah. uh, aspects. And I find a lot of people that says, yeah, this information was great. And then I had this other one that I was working with and that was really great. And when I put the two of them together, boom, it was just like even, you know, it's just like your, your work just clarified the other things. And so it, it's just, it's exciting. But again, there's no right or wrong and this is not to substitute anything else. It's not to take away from anything else that somebody might already be doing. But I think that they're also going to find it's not going to interfere with anything else that they're doing. And it is kind of like that law of attraction kind of concept where, you know, if if you're someone like me who puts together your yearly vision board so that you're manifesting what it is that you want for your life and your dreams, you know, it is kind of like that on a day to day basis. Like if you're reading it in the morning and you have this awareness of, you know, being in grace or being in compassion or whatever it is that the code is talking about for that particular day, it does allow you to, you know, draw that attraction towards you and manifest that if you chose to do that. So I think that is something that, you know, is worth mentioning. But I just, you know, you're such a, you're such a beautiful spirit and soul and your gentleness and your authenticity. I mean, it clearly is communicated through this interview. And I think anybody listening to you can feel that, feel your energy um, as I do. So I, you know, I love that as well. But I do, I do ask each and every one of my guests, if I were to pick up your earth angel feather off the ground, and you had a message to the world, what would your message be? Oh my goodness. <laughs> I, think, I think really the message is just to hold yourself and everyone and everything around you in love and compassion no matter whether you agree with them or don't agree with them, whether they're on a path you would be inspired by or a path that you would have nothing to do with. And to realize that the things that are of greatest value that are in alignment with compassion and love can never, ever be taken from you. No situation, no circumstance, and no person on the face of this earth can remove what is of true value. That is so beautiful. Like, seriously, that is so beautiful. <laughs> I ask all of my guests this question, and I'm always amazed by the answers because the answers are just so profound, and yours was nothing less than that. You know, I mean, it's just beautiful. So thank you. So I do want to, you know, extend my complete gratitude and appreciation for you, you know, sharing this space with me today. I'm just so appreciative and I encourage the audience to, you know, go in and take a peek at your book and consider uh, purchasing the book and, you know, being part of this journey. It's beautiful. Um, and it's something, like I said, I have a copy and I enjoy reading it day to day. So, you know, on behalf of myself, I thank you so, so much. Well, th well thank you. And it's such a gift to be able to be on this show. And I do want to mention too, Kathy, that with this work, I have many layers to it for people. And Jesse, who is the soul that was in this body prior to me, went through many tough times. And there were times that she could have used help or assistance or just community with people. And she couldn't afford it. I mean, literally in her journey, lived on a handful of pumpkin seeds for a week. You know, literally $30 would have fed her for a month. And so she didn't have those things to spare. And I believe very strongly that I want everybody to have access to at least a piece of this work, even if they couldn't afford the book. And so I do post on social media, like the month 
influences and new moon and full moon influences. And I do run a study group, which is free for people to attend, where they can come in, they can ask questions, they can share experiences that they're having, and we just openly talk and have a free-flowing discussion. And I do that usually twice a month at the new moon and the full moon. So I'd like people to know that because it's not just buying a book. You also have these other opportunities. And for those who are truly in hardships, they have access to opportunities that don't cost anything with this work. And that is how strongly I feel about making this work accessible to as many people as I possibly can in some way, shape, and form. And I have many times where people have turned their lives around and they're so, you know, it's amazing how just, you know, even a couple of hours of communing with other people or having access to some ability to ask a question can turn a life around. And, you know, I watched that with Jesse and her life and knowing that importance. So when I consider this, it's amazing how many people have not had anything sometimes when they've started on the journey and now they'll, you know, it's become the gift they give everybody. <laughs> That's what everybody gets for their gifts now. So it's Aww. very exciting. This is the first year, 2021 is the first year that it's been available um, to on a wholesale level. So bookstores and people like that have the opportunity to order it. And it's on, again, the website where they can do that. So that's just one of the things I want people to know that are listening, because I do understand what those hard times are like. I do understand what it's like to not have food, to not have shelter, to um, be in those tough, tough places. And so know that there are still options available to you and don't hesitate to take advantage of those options that are available. That's beautiful. So, so beautiful. Well, that's all we have time for today. I wish we could keep on talking, <laughs> but um, that's all we have time for today. So thank you again so much. And this is Catherine Daniels with Retreat to Peace, reminding you to live your authentic life in peace. And as always, Retreat to Peace. We'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.